Welcome to Out of the Blue, number 436. So yesterday I uh, I showed this exercise where you bring the bow over the strings. I want to step back and look at the previous exercise. Okay, so what I'm going to do is show the basic posture of violin playing and I'm going to connect it to to two motions that you already know okay so with the bowing you lead with the wrist so the hand follows right and that is actually what you do when you check your watch look at the time now this is funny to say this is a dated kind of an anachronistic gesture now, but everybody knows this gesture of what time is it, right? Even people who don't wear watches will say, well, do you have the time? Well, maybe not. I mean, maybe I'm behind the times, but, <laughs> or maybe I'm talking to people over 50, okay? So, there's this gesture of the time, and there's this gesture of looking at your finger. Okay, so lesson one is simply this. It's time to look at your fingernails. And then you drop your wrist with the wrist first and the hand following, and you bring it back up. It's time, so you do it down here. I don't know exactly where the camera is. My iPhone is acting funny, so I'm back at the camera. But anyway, um, here, it's time to look at your fingernails. And then you bring your wrist down and up. It's time to look at your fingernails. You can do this right-handed or left-handed, or both. It's time to look at your fingernails. It's time to look at your fingernails. So that's lesson one that I already showed on the cassette. And that's an exercise in itself, and you can do that exercise um, whether you're a beginner or or not. You can do that at any time. The second one is this. So we're, we have a violin now, and we have a bow, and we're not going to let them touch. And we're going to do this motion. So you want it close. And not touching. And you do this motion both ways over every string. Okay. It takes patience, it develops posture, it does all kinds of things. Alright, see? Slow. Not touching. So I would say my bow is about a half an inch over the strip. Uh, see, it's it's. I can feel it in my left hand right now. So that would be four times, once for every string. There's uh, another aspect to this world I'm creating uh, that I haven't really mentioned yet. Uh, um, because some of the things we're doing here is, a, is addressing the new reality that we're in. And uh, one of the realities of the new reality is, is uh, money's getting tight. And one of the ways to confront or to deal with or to endure money being tight is to be able to make delicious food for a small amount of money. If you can eat well and you know how to make something good, uh, it helps you keep your head together. So this has already been eaten into, but let me just cover that up. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. What I'm talking about is
chocolate pudding for breakfast. So I already made it, and I already peeled some of the top off and tried it, and I'm going to peel the top off some more, because it forms a skin in the refrigerator. And you kind of can take this whole skin off, and you can either feed it to the kids or feed it to the dog. <laughs> I, I think some people consider it a delicacy, dogs especially. <laughs> But this is homemade chocolate pudding. I make a spiced chocolate pudding. So there's clove in it and cinnamon and uh, vanilla. And then there's chocolate and there's milk, a little bit of water and sugar. and uh, cornstarch and it's more nutritious and more delicious this is part of staying healthy is eating the most nutritious food possible which can sometimes also be the most delicious this is delicious this is a Neo-Swedenborgian tradition of chocolate pudding for breakfast.